Let's see who we got. All right, it looks like YouTube is connecting and I think we should be live. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like we're connected. All right, so we have an iPhone 11 Pro here. It has no service. Um, you can see here, it just says no service. You also see the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth button, they're grayed out. So today we're gonna go through the process of repairing this and we're also gonna go through my new heater, which I do like. Uh, there are some things about it that you have to be careful, but I'll cover that. It's the L2023 heater. It's about $80 from China plus shipping. Uh, the, the thing I like about, about it the most is the, these plates are magnetic, so they're real easy to swap out. And um, there's multiple plates. So this one's for the 11, the 10 and 11 series. Uh, this one's for the 13 series, uh, 14 series, 12 series, and a universal. So it's just flat plate. Um, also, I am live on, on, on my Zoom call. So if you wanna join the call here with, I currently have just Matt with me here. If you wanna say hello, Matt? I don't know if they'll hear you. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, um, I don't know if you saw the chat. Make sure you type it there. Sure. Oh, you know what? Let me, yeah, yeah. The YouTube's not gonna see uh, the Zoom call, unfortunately. I don't know how to set that up yet. But you know what, oh, let, me, let me, I forgot. Let me go on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm gonna go live on Facebook on my Facebook page, so we'll have uh, you know people from everywhere. <laughs> Let's uh, let me just start that up. Share to your page. Let's see, go live. All right, I do see some people are joining the uh, YouTube stream as well. Let's see, who do we have? We have uh, Michael, really appreciate you on your channel. That's great. Uh, looks like there's somebody else, Bunker, as well. Welcome, everybody. All right, so looks like I am live. Let me share this on my... Uh, Facebook as well. All right, cool. So let me start over real quick. So we have, and plus we're getting more people joining. So let me just go over. So we have an iPhone 11 Pro. You can see it is constantly searching. I can't see the, like all these windows. <laughs> all right, it's constantly searching, no service. Uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are grayed out. Um, Another thing you can do is dial star pound zero six pound. Nothing happens, so that tells you you have a baseband issue. Another thing is, let me pull it up. If you go to, so if you go to the settings, you can see the modem firmware field is blank. That is another sign that you have a baseband issue. So these are all signs that we have uh, motherboard problems. So, oh, I don't, I don't know how to say your name in the chat. So, um, but yeah, also if you do want to join us here in the in the uh, Zoom call, I do have Matt here joining us as well. So, Facebook people, if you're commenting, I can't see your comments. Uh, join the YouTube. I will see those at least. So, let's go ahead and uh, check this out. Use the link in the video description if you want to join the locals community so you can access the Zoom call. My goal is to make do at least once a week these live streams, but we've been pretty busy. All right, so also my new heater, we're gonna use that today. Since the my old heater is is discontinued, we no longer well, I haven't seen a 14 series uh, heat plate. So this was my original favorite heater. Uh, it was cool because you can clamp in the plates real easy, swap them out. Uh, although this one's better because it's magnetic. What was that? This one. I'm really excited to see this heater because like you're saying, I've been trying to wait for the one that you recommend to get to come back in stock. Oh yeah, um, no, that one's... 
That one's out of production. Yeah, yeah. I got like a different one to like hold me over, but I'm, so I'm excited. <laughs> that should be pretty cool. Yeah. Like that, I have that red one. Uh, it's like, it's okay, but it's not, it's not that great. All it right. doesn't hold a very like consistent temperature. Let me see. Let me, let me make a show it here. So let's go to desktop view. So currently I only know of China selling it, uh, DIYFixTool.com. I linked it in the video description. So this one comes with all the iPhone plates. Uh, now I did find on AliExpress, uh, there, they sell plates for all these other models too, including Samsung's. So if you see here on the screen, they have, you know, S21, 22 and 20, 22 Ultra, whatever models these are. Uh, That's heat. Pretty sick. So I haven't had luck splitting um, the the sandwiches on Samsungs, so you know I might have to buy these to try them out. So yeah, and these are magnetic. Another thing I do like about it before we move on is if you have a hold on, let me grab it. If you have a 12 and newer, so like a 14, right? We have this flex. Let's see if this one fits. Okay, this might be a bad example. Uh, yeah, it's a bad example. So, the <laughs> so for sure, the 13s, you can see the plate is flat. So the antenna, maybe I can fit the 14 in here. Uh, almost. So at least on 12s and 13s, the antenna can fit here and it's flat. So the antenna sticks out and you're able to split uh, the sandwich is easier. You don't have to modify it like we had to do it on this one. Now the 12 series did fit in here, but you know, these are flats. You can see there's no walls. I don't know why the 14, they added walls on here so that the antenna gets blocked. But uh, that's another thing I do like about it. All right, so this is the motherboard for the uh, 11 Pro, the one we're gonna fix today. Uh, you can see here the, the different um, models, so 10, 10S Max, uh, 11, 11 Pro Max series. Um, one of the things I do like about this as well is it's very like low profile. So when you go under the microscope, you don't have to raise up your microscope a lot. Now, this one was even more, it was actually shorter. So was, I don't know if you guys can see that. So it was a few inches shorter. Maybe, maybe like not even a quarter inch shorter. So not that big of a difference. Uh, also it beeps very loud, like loud. I don't know if you guys can pick that up on the microphone or not, but extremely loud. And the buttons work really well. This seems to have the exact same buttons as this one. Although this one's very unreliable. You click the buttons, it doesn't always move. Now, one downside I found so far is that uh, this temperature is not accurate. So my first time, first few days, probably the first few weeks, first week I had it, uh, it was working as expected. So like 180 for um, you know, 10 and 11 series, and then 12 series I was using 220, and it was normal. Uh, last few days, I've, I've noticed it gets really hot even at low temperatures. So now, I'm actually using like really low, like 120 to split these models just because um, I, I just getting hotter than it's supposed to. So I don't know what happened, but just always keep in mind when you have these heaters, be careful with your temperatures because you can get it too hot and damage the board and then have to, uh, best case, do a bottom board swap. Worst case, you, um, yeah, worst case, you uh, float the CPU and stuff. Uh, is there calibration? I don't know. So when actually, I think I might have thrown away the, the ticket. There's like a little ticket that came in the box that said for US models, uh, do this. Uh, I don't know what any of it meant. I was just saying, follow these steps. I followed them and I did it. And then I said only for 110 volt devices, not uh, 220 volts. So I don't know what that meant. Also, before I go on, Let's go under the microscope. Let's see, let's adjust this. So one thing I like to do 
And by the way, I'm splitting it because this has a no service, no Wi-Fi, no baseband issue. Pretty much if you have that issue, uh, you have to split it to see what the problem is. Hopefully it's not a bunch of rip pads. Um, that way we can fix it quick. Otherwise we're gonna have an extended live stream. There it goes. This is like really loud. That's one critique is I wish they would lower the volume just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Um, so right now it's at 120. So what I like to do here is, so I don't know if it's melting point yet, but if you look between the screws, you can often press down and see if it uh, oozes out. Also just insert your tool to see if you can split it up. I think I'm gonna go up. Actually, no, I'm gonna add some flux around the perimeter. By the way, if you're watching this live stream, don't forget to smash the like button. It helps uh, promote the channel and to spread this to more people. So I'm gonna add some flux. All right. The flux also lets us know whether or not, you know, it's hot. Based on the reaction of the flux, we can kind of get an idea. All right, I'm gonna turn up the temperature a little bit more. Let's do 135 and see if anything changes. I wonder if people on, uh, on Facebook can see. Is there anyone, anyone commenting? I can see the, like, all these windows. <laughs> I'm just gonna close that. But, it, but overall, I do like this heater. Oh look, here you go. You can see uh, in this gap right here between the sim tray, see that flux? It's kind of hard to see through the microscope. You guys see that? That tells you that it's getting uh, pretty hot enough to possibly split. And I like pressing down. Uh, just make sure you're at a lower temp so you can... Um... Oh, it looks like uh, somebody joined the Zoom call. Uh, hey, Caesar, thanks for joining us. We got Matt here as well. There. This is a 135. Let's see if we can split it. The way I like to split it is insert my tool underneath the screw post. Although this one is actually moving. Now, one thing I do like about this one is we have the little hands that we can use to hold down the board. So I'm gonna use that. Whereas the X360, the previous one did not. There you go, split it, lift it and then flip it over and then turn off the heater. And then let's see what we got. So I'm gonna move the top board out of the way and I'm gonna get this board out of the heater just in case it gets really hot. Then what I like to do is to cool things down is put it on a little steel block. This will cool down the board way faster than just sitting on your mat. So first thing I, look, I like to look for is just look at this chip here is often cracks and can cause uh, no service issues, but I don't see any signs of it being cracked. Baseband CPU also sometimes will crack, but it's pretty rare. Wi-Fi itself doesn't look cracked either. Oh, look, some rip pads. All right, so far there's a bunch of pads here. One there, that looks like ground. These potentially ground. And look at the spacer standing up here. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, well, besides that, we have some pads to repair, but not too many. So I would say this looks doable as far as 
repairability. And let's see, maybe, let's see if I could pin my video now. There we go. All right, so this is cooled down. Let's check the top board. Yeah, so here's all the rip pads. You can see them better if I turn on my polarizer light. I'm not turn on the light, but rotate the, the lens. I think most of these are ground too, so it should be an easy fix. All right, so one of the first things I do like to do is scrape off this uh, thermal paste because this will get on the pads and make a mess. And I've never seen any negative repercussions from this. By the way, if you have a device having these issues, uh, doesn't matter which model, let me know. I do offer this repair for US customers. We get a lot of requests internationally, but I don't wanna deal with customs and international shipping. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so now let's see. So one of the things I want to do first is just before I forget, is get rid of these pads here. So I'm going to turn the heater back on. Oh, also this heater, I bought this one and the new mechanic one. Uh, if you give me a second, I'll go grab it. So I can show you what not to buy. So this mechanic heater, is trash, at least in my experience. I mean, maybe I have a bad unit, but uh, take a look. This is the new mechanic heater. It um, is also interchangeable plates, although I don't like the mechanism to hold the plate because it's like very flimsy. All right, so, you know, these plates, there's like multiple models, but you slide it in and then you put this here on top. But what happens is Sometimes it'll, it'll like lift it up a little bit, depending on the plate. I guess this one doesn't do it that much. Also, um, this thing does not get hot at all. Like I had to put it at like 200 to 250 to just split a regular uh, iPhone uh, like X or whatever. It was take, and it takes forever. Like, and it actually kept turning off on me like randomly. So I don't know, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. And it like literally took like 15 minutes to reach the temp. So don't get this. Uh, or I mean, if you guys want to get it and then see if you guys have the same issues, but I didn't like it. Uh, yeah, Caesar, feel free to ask a question if you're here. You can come off mute as well. Hey, just have a quick question. Yeah, what's I'm going on? I'm repairing a iPhone 12 Pro Max and the top board doesn't want to boot up I already checked the VCC um, main line, it was okay. I checked the boost line, it was okay. And that, the same thing. So uh, what's, the, uh, what's the backstory? What's the, oh, the backstory was that the customer dropped the phone and the screen cracked, but then it started boot looping. Okay. And, uh, like two days ago, I dislodged the board and I um, took the board from the top to the bottom and I re-sandwiched it, and now it's not turning on. So, 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 once, uh -huh. so it came in for restart issues or boot looping issues? Uh, yeah, it was boot looping. So just on the Apple logo? Uh, yeah. Hmm. And then, um, wh uh, what'd you try uh, as the first steps to troubleshoot? Well, first steps, I decided to, um, Check every line before, um, what would you call it? This, um, when you sandwich the board. Uh-huh. Splitting the sandwich. So, uh, yeah, there you go. I split it the sandwich and then it started, it turned on again. It was fine. But then two days ago, it decided to go black. Hmm. I tried using my tweezers to, uh, manually power on the phone and it doesn't want to do anything. And uh prompting to boot, it's, not even doing anything like no short or no um you should check uh there's a coil that breaks often on these 12 series it's called the uh, sys boost like system boost coil 
on the 12, you said 12 Pro Max? Yes. Um, yeah, it's on the top shield. Like you gotta okay. uh, remove that top shield. Or if you just search the ZXW, you should be able to find like, it's like a large coil. It's very common on iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. Not so much on 12 Pro Max, but I just had uh, one of our students find the, uh, find it on a 12 Pro Max, exact same coil. So when you prompt to boot, it, it basically does nothing. You'll see tiny little spikes of current draw, but um, it, it, it yeah, won't actually want to boot. So maybe it's yeah, I something. Yeah, I tried that, but there's no boot prompt. Like I'll try to prompt it with the board, you know, with the normal power button. Yeah, I, I don't. It, it won't do anything. Yeah, sometimes you got like tweezers. You got to hold it, and then you'll see a tiny little spike for a split second. Okay. So. Some, yeah, sometimes like it just won't do anything until like you hold it or you keep clicking and clicking and clicking and then it'll like spike and then nothing. So maybe it's that. Uh, another thing is if it has a, like a shorted RAM or something, it can also do similar things. So um, if you split it, now how much experience do you have splitting sandwich boards and working on them? Uh, not too much, I just started uh, a month ago. Okay, it well, could. I did uh, practice on two two iPhones um, 11s. So yeah, so I mean, there's always a chance you overheated the board in the in the splitting process. Um, you know, that's, okay. that's that's one of the risky parts, especially um, if you have all new tools. Like I was saying on this heater, um, it was working fine, and all of a sudden it's running really hot. So like, I was able to split this one at 140, 130. And I didn't even, usually it's like 180. So it could be your heater running really hot and you didn't realize it and, and it overheated everything. But that, you know, okay. it's, it's hard to know without like looking at it myself. But that, that would be the things I would check. Especially if they said they had a hard drop, maybe that coil broke. You know, the, the, okay. It's a possibility. All right. Yeah. All right, thank so, you for helping. Good luck, let us know. How that goes. I'm just gonna sit here and chill and watch you. Fix yeah. This one. Cool. Go for it. All right. Cool. So I've removed the old rip pads from the bottom board. Now we're gonna do the top board. So what I like to do is use the heater itself. It's off. See the screen's off, but it has re residual heat, which will help me um, with this process. Actually, let's see. Let's find the rip pads first and confirm if we even need to fix them. All right, so one way to tell is by the look of the pad, kind of hard to tell here through the camera, but I just, I just use ZXW instead. Um, give me a second, let me pull it up. Also, I think because the uh, pads look a little, or have no flux, it's hard to see that there's even pads there. All right, cool. By the way, anyone else watched the live stream want to actually hop in the Zoom call with some of the other guys here, uh, check out the link in the description. If you sign up, you can join us and hopefully I'll get my life together and be able to do these once a week <laughs> so we can do live calls like this. Um, all right, I, I pulled up the wrong model. See desktop. Those on YouTube, you can see we have a Zoom call here. So, but oops, I minimized everything by accident. All right, so. Uh, I don't know why I opened the uh, 12 Pro Max. All right, so rip pads are gonna be basically this area here, and I saw a few over here. So let's see if we could uh, kind of track them down. Let's rotate the board view to match how I have the board right now. So let's see it this way all 
All right, so this is gonna be tricky because there's like a ton of pads. So we're just gonna count the, hold on, I didn't minimize the wrong thing. All right, so let's track down. We have, I see two pads here. So if we try to count, let me get this out of the heater. I think the camera's not able to handle the contrast. All right, so we have one right here, these two. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, so 13, 14, so 13 and 15. So if you go to ZXW, one, let's see their count. Yeah, one, two, where am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Now, I don't know if I kind of wrong, but it makes sense is these two. So what we can do is diode mode, uh, the pads that look like they're ripped. So f first let me use a blade to scratch it out. And expose some of the trace, some of the line here. By the way, those those of you on YouTube, if you're watching, don't forget to hit the like button. We have 13 likes, 20 viewers. So five of you are no, I did the math wrong. Uh, 18 of you. Crap, eight of you are not liking it. It's hard to do, <laughs> there's like a million things going on here. All right, so on the upper right, I have my multimeter set to diode mode. Let's probe these pins. Yeah, see we have a reading 358, 357. So looks like we do have to repair. I must have counted wrong. Um, so what I like to do with these is scratch these out, expose the copper, but you gotta be real careful not to dig too deep, otherwise you destroy the, the area. So Caesar in the, in the Zoom call is asking how much is the, the program? So there's two programs right now. Uh, there's the basic soldering program, which covers um, just like charging ports, HDMI ports, you know, Nintendo Switch ports. Uh, that one's 500. It's a 30-day 30, 30 program. It comes with the training portal. It comes with uh, live training calls twice a week, uh, group chat with all the students. You have access to the coaches um, and I'll link it, I actually linked it in the Facebook group, the phone repair community group. That's the early bird pricing. That's if you have little soldering experience and want to kind of master the basics. And then we have a full-fledged uh, program where we do more advanced repairs like these and data recovery and other stuff. That one, uh, you would have to talk to Ben, who's in charge of that program. Um, here that basically uh, it's kind of the same thing except it's 90 days and it's it covers way more topics um, as well so that one I do have linked in the video description all right so I fix those two pads let's go to actually no, let's go here now we got to go to the like the pads here which I gotta rotate the ZXW so we can match up how we have it here. All right, so let's just take a look. You know what, I'll just, let me clean up the board. I think the flux is making it hard to see.
By the way, the program uh, that I teach in is all online. So it's like live training calls all online. We have students from all over the world as well, not just in the U.S. So if you're like in Europe or anywhere else, you want to sign up. I'm the lead soldering coach. We give one-on-one uh, -on -one support as well. The program, more like four-on-one, -on because we have multiple coaches as well who help with the program. All right, so yeah, this is much better to see now. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. Let's go diode mode. All right, so from what I can see, there's this one, this one, and this one, and then these three. So let's uh, let's get started with cleaning these. We got 15 likes now. So what I like to do here is just scratch between the two dots. And kind of expose the copper area. And then, oops. Same over here, the next one. The way here is, actually let me go to the microscope, full screen. I wish you guys can see how clear it looks through the polarizer light. Um, through the camera it doesn't translate well, but you can, see, you can clearly see where this uh, line is at. Kind of like x-ray vision, so to speak. All right, I got these two. I got one more here. So let me see what that looks like. Okay, I can see the trace. I'm using my left hand to hold down the board and to kind of help control the blade so I can have more accuracy when scraping. So you want to be real careful with this. You don't, you don't want to expose ground and then short the line to ground when you're doing the soldering. You just want to scratch just what you need. See? Now you can kind of see what I scraped out. And then it was these three here. Now those first three I did were like two dots. On the next one, you're gonna see is, uh, hold on. Seems like the live chat died out. I haven't seen anyone comment in a while. <laughs> um, so these three dots I like to basically scrape in between. So from dot to dot to dot. So kind of like a little triangle here. So I'll scrape like that, and then scrape like that, and then kind of go in between them all, all these three, and then you kind of expose a little triangle. You don't have to expose it all either, just the more, uh, surface you can expose the better but not required because we're going to solder uh, a new pad on top 34 minutes on the live stream alright so just scrape in between Sometimes you can drop alcohol and see a little better. 
something like that. But at least scraping alcohol can help uh, clean out some of this debris. So I do have a link to the polarizer. Let's see if the live stream gets broken. <laughs> oh man, the scope camera is still working. All right, can you guys hear me now? Type a one in the chat if you guys can hear me. Looks like I fixed it, I hope. All right, so the guys on Zoom can hear me. All right, so I hope the people on Facebook can also hear me. All right, cool. Sorry about that. My, I was saying that my computer, uh, I have like a bunch of USB 4K cameras all plugged in and my computer can't handle it. It always seems to have connection issues. Um, does anyone have any suggestions on a very powerful computer that can handle multiple 4K USB cameras? Uh, like a lot of USB 3.0 stuff because that's what I need. Is this pad needed? Oh, there might be one more pad. So if we go to, yeah, if we go to ZXW, um, this one's missing. One, two, three. Yeah, this one as well. Let me fix that one. Yeah, my computer is custom built, so it's a uh, thing is, I don't know what um, what motherboard to get. What's the top of the line motherboard? If you guys want to. You probably would need to go to a PCIe uh, USB hub. 
Actually, yeah, I got it. one, and it's and it actually doesn't even work. Like I'll plug something in, and then everything disconnects. Oh no! So yeah, because I, I know that basically you start running out of like controllers, essentially. Yeah, um, I think so, or like bandwidth or something. Yeah, the other thing that I would say, but it would be like really convoluted, would be to have another computer that is essentially having some of the cameras plugged into it and then um. that uh, <laughs> you can switch to that through like a capture card if that makes sense right yeah and all the cameras are mixed on the other computer i've seen i know there's like um like a camera system where you plug in all your uh hdmi cameras to this one mm -hmm. controller and that's like, that's how like video production companies do it but most of my cameras are usb so yeah. i only like two cameras are hdmi and which I'm using use, uh, HDMI capture cards. I have three, the scope, the overhead, and the Sony main one, which I'm not even using right now. This one, but it's not even working. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I'm like, if anyone wants to chime, anybody else has some tips? Uh, pretty much all of them are 4K except the yeah, multimeter one. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, five, four, five. Yeah, at least that I could remember right now. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's check if this is a ground line. Just to confirm. Yeah, this is ground, so I don't have to fix that one. All right, so I gotta fix those two and those. I think that's everything. All right, so let me show you guys how to fix these pads. So flux, flux set all up. And then we're gonna first pre-tin the pads. So I don't know what the, would the GPU make a difference in my issue? Cause I don't know if, I don't think it's a GPU problem. It's, a, it's just the USB, um, whatever USB system kind of running out of resources. Somebody said, uh, top of the moment is Z. 790 or AM5 or top end AM4. But uh, I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> I used to be real into PC, custom PC builds back in high school. And I was trying to play Counter Strike. But I was like, what, 2004? So like 20 years ago. Oh man. I'm old. All right, so I'm using my Action T420D with the 115, uh, 115 handle, which has a tiny micro tip and a conical tip. I'm basically just feeding a little bit of solder into the pads. Once you do that, then we can bring in the solder lugs So I did buy a PCIe card with extra USB 3.0 card uh, ports, but it's not working. Like, and actually I had bought two and one of them was causing my PC not to boot up. So I took one off and returned it. And the other one just doesn't work at all. So I don't know if I'm missing something. It's plugged into the port. And my graphics card is taking up a big chunk of space in there. So I don't know if What's going on? I feel really, uh, I feel like a noob sometimes. 
And, it, and yeah, it's not OBS itself. It's uh, the PC itself because um, even on Zoom, uh, it'll do the same thing. All right, so I have the solder logs in there. So I'm gonna do the trick. The fastest way that I found to do this is just hold it lined up and then tap the side and the solder from underneath will just flow through. There you go, these are soldered on. Now let's go to the other ones. Yeah, so how, how do I get more bandwidth? Is it like the CPU? Is it uh, something else? The motherboard? Like dependent on the motherboard? How do I get a motherboard I can handle? It's, it's for sure the uh, like Northbridge and Southbridge uh, the caps of the USB. And I believe a lot of that has moved into the CPU now. Like the chipsets aren't even on the board anymore. Oh, I see. Um, so it's like you basically just need to buy like the most expensive, probably Intel, because they're the ones that came up with USB C uh, board you can find. Like literally the most expensive Intel uh, CPU you can find. So what is, what is that? Like 2K or something? Or? Uh, yeah, probably 1500 or 2K. <laughs> yeah. Just for just the CPU. Right. Yeah. And, then and it's going to be the extreme whatever, blah, blah, blah. That's what my buddy runs. I mean, I can hit him up. Uh, it does have the tri-channel DDR as well, I believe. So your DDR is way, way more expensive too. The RAM? So definitely, yeah, yeah, because it's not dual channel, it's tri-channel, I believe. Oh. My, my buddy runs it, I can ask. Um, yeah. He does like Plex. Yeah, like media server? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got like an 80 terabyte Plex, so. He wants oh, to, and like a bunch of people use that, so he wants to run like top notch. So that would probably be the answer, but it's super yeah. expensive. I the the easiest way I think might be literally streaming PC. A what? Streaming PC. Basically, you have a whole other computer that all it does is it streams, and then your main computer handles like the cameras all the other stuff yeah all the cameras and stuff like that and then you send like one uh, picture and then the additional cameras I just uh basically um how would i output that from one pc oh i guess the hdmi out right yeah to yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a yeah. hdmi capture card on the yeah. other one i actually yeah. have i have a separate lap a gaming laptop that's like top of the line i guess yeah, so oh, what you might want to do is have a couple of the cameras hooked up to that, and then you have that go to a capture card that, uh, but the thing is, is those cameras are probably going to essentially be static, because how are you going to manipulate them? You're going to have to go yeah. to the computer and like press hotkeys, which you can set hotkeys for OBS. So, um, maybe I'll just do everything. Oh, no, I got to figure out. I got to do... Like, yeah, I mean, I, I'd, I'd rather probably just buy a top of the line computer that can handle what I guess yeah. the tricky part is knowing which things to get. Yeah, yeah, I'll, um, I'll message my boy right now. Yeah, no rush. Yeah, uh, someone's saying to get a multi port HDMI capture. Yeah, see, that's kind of what I'm saying, like, where it's, you kind of 50-50 yeah. all the USB stuff between the different computers and then mix it via an, H an HDMI capture. Yeah. Because I really don't want to buy, well, so Two of my cameras, so the one you can see my hands right now, and the one, uh, some other one, it's 4K USB, but I mean, it's, it's decent quality. That was only like a hundred bucks, and it's manual focus, so you can really dial in the, the focus and the, the quality. Decent, but maybe I'll try to move on from those, because I think those also I've noticed uh, before I've had. Um, 
constant problem with them disconnecting or I have to um, like change, mess around with the properties, like deactivate and reactivate. Because they have, I think it's part of the, part of the problem is it uses the same name on the USB device. So the OBS gets confused. It'll like select both for the same, um, I don't know. Like I gotta switch back and forth between the the cameras and the no <clears throat> BS. I think I got this fixed. Anyways, uh, back to this repair. So I've fixed all the pads using these solder lugs. These are the Wiley, Refox, whatever solder lugs. They're pre-made pads. Um, so I fixed only the ones that needed to be fix. I have have the pad centered. You can see uh, I got some solder on top, but the solder from the bottom that I pretend is what's holding it from the bottom. Um, so all these are solid, like they're not going to come off. All right. So now we got our UV masses down so that we can, um, Make sure to not lose them. If we do have to split again, let's say I re it and it still doesn't work, and I have to split it so I don't lose all my work. What I do is I'll put some UV mask here on a coin. And I gotta spread it over all the pads. Oh, that's a lot. So let's just reuse some of this for this pad here. Yeah, I could use some over here as well. I'm scared he's gonna drip a big chunk. I do see uh, Caesar asked uh, after 90 days, do you still get uh, do you still get help? Actually, we do have uh, continued education after that. So basically, it's like a small monthly fee to keep stay in the program. So yeah, you could talk to to Ben about that, like the pricing and all that. So we have a group chat with all the students. That's where a lot of the learning goes on. Like one of the students will ask like, oh, I got this phone is doing this and not sure what to do. And a lot of the experienced students will come in and chime in and they'll all chime in. Some of the other coaches will chime in, you know, like, usually like, oh, did you try this, you try that. So er everyone has has uh, different perspectives as well. So everyone shares kind of their experience and techniques. All right, so I got UV mask. The goal with the UV mask here is to spread it around the the jumper, the pad, I mean, uh, you want to soak it in that little cavity. And what I like to do is just put a little bit on your tweezer and then spread it out. So one is to apply and one is to spread. Once you run out, you just dip your tweezer back in that little coin that I had. To there you go. So let's just go with that. I think it's good enough. And then my coin, I should clean it because then it gets UV mask everywhere. Oh, and then this is my new UV light. Uh, I really enjoy it. I got it from In Your Gadgets. Oh, looks like my camera. This camera's frozen. So it's. Uh, USB-C rechargeable, you click it and it turns on. It actually turns off on its own after 10 seconds. So you don't actually um, leave it on overnight and drain the battery. So if you, that's one second zoom. So basically you could just hold it. This should cover that whole area I was working on, which is on the bottom right. Uh, are you selling these on your website? Selling what? 
I've, I don't know what you're referring to. I see it turns off, turn it back on. So I'll make sure I get it nice and cured. Also, I, I recommend against looking at the UV light directly. Like right now I'm looking at it through the cameras, so I'm, I'm safe, but uh, if you are gonna look at UV light directly, get some UV glasses. I do have some somewhere around here, but I highly recommend it. I think it was only like 20 bucks. My other one broke, my USB one. Yeah, that looks cured. So now they've cured the pads. Let's ex re-expose them. I usually just try to re-expose about 70, 80% of the pad so that the UV mask can, can hold some of it, some of the pad. All right, that's good enough. The goal is to at least get the center part exposed. Okay. Let's scrape this out. And also when you're doing the UV mask, when you're applying it, make sure you do a really thin layer. If you do it too thick, what happens is that when you try to cure it, only the exterior shell would cure, but the inside is still liquid and when you go to scrape it like this it all just kind of oozes out and crumbles and didn't do anything so that's the biggest issue or the other issue that people do especially when they're just beginning to put too thick of a uv layer so what happens is it's actually blocking it creates like a mound that blocks the like whatever you're soldering, like blocking it from sitting flat because it's taking up vertical space. All right. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's not pretty, but it should work. I just want to expose. Oh, and by the way, the, the 90 day program we have, you get access you get lifetime access to the, all the live recording, live recordings, which is basically a, a, a like video call, a Zoom call with me and all the students, and we walk through all these different repairs. So we have like over two years of live training calls on a myriad of, of repairs. So like by now, pretty much every common repair you ever heard of, we've done a call on it. And you get access to it um, when you join. So you can access all the old calls and get it ongoing. All right. Uh, looks like uh, it's 12 a.m. in New Jersey. <laughs> well, it's uh, 8.44 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So I'm going to put this back on the heater and we're basically just going to re-sandwich it as is. Um, so before I do that, do we have enough flux? Oh, so the uh, solder lugs, I don't have them for sale. I don't, I honestly, I don't sell anything. I do, I just link to stuff. Um, but you can get them on mobile centric surrender gadgets. I don't, I don't know if I linked them on my website. And I think I just ran out of flux. All right, let me turn off the heater and swap out my tube of flux. Good thing I have an extra tube. <laughs> All right, so you guys can watch. Yeah, see, that just drained. Literally nothing left. So I highly recommend this uh, tube mate thing from Tool, it's like a metal uh, syringe thing. Now I do have uh, Tony, Tone, I think he might be in here. He sent me this, which is a glass flux tube. Uh, I still haven't had a chance to try it, but I'll try it soon. All right, so throw that away. 
this way and then transfer over which I just like to use this so I don't have pliers nearby by the way this is, uh, where's everyone watching from I do see uh, official dream TV is in New Jersey I'm in Las Vegas where's everybody else from who's watching wonder how many countries are in here all right so we got the new tube and essentially what we're going to do is go around the perimeter oh wow things already hot go oops all along the perimeter, I just ooze a big chunk. Somebody said they're watching the wrong channel. What is the right channel? I want to pre prep the surface area. They get a big blob of flux. Let me see if I can clean that up. Where do you get your low melt solder? Uh, I guess it depends on your definition of low melt. Uh, I use Kester 6337 low melt solder, which is basically 183 Celsius from Amazon. I got a roll about, about seven years ago and still have that same roll today. If you're talking about low melt uh, 138 solder wire, I got it from either Mobile Centrix or Under Gadgets. It's a mechanic solder X wire, which I almost never use. And there's low melt paste as well, which both Under Gadgets and Mobile Centrix have. I think it should be good. All right. Uh, all right, so we have flowed flux everywhere. Let me make sure this is not molten because you don't want to, yeah, this looks solid. We're still in the cold. All right, so we're just gonna, no need an actual rebar. We're just gonna squish it back together. I call this a squish method. Because on iPhone, um, iPhone 10, 10s, 10s Max, 11, and 11 Pro series, uh, since it uses low melt solder, uh, when you split it, it splits, it leaves the solder balls behind very even. It's very easy to re-solder back. So what I do, I'll just, I want to actually reball the sandwich. I'll just lay it, lay it over like this. Add some flux. I have other videos of this process as well, but basically just reflow it back and squish it back. So now we wait. We're at ninety-three degrees Celsius. This how that film. There you go. All right, you guys get to see the, the reveal. All looks much better now. I think the other heater might still have the film as well. Maybe not. It looks very similar. I wonder if it's the same company, the X360 and this one, the L2023. I wonder if they named that for the year that we're in. All right, so we're at 130. So what I like to do is press down, try to squish this flat. 
I'm actually going to look at it from the side to see if I can spot any gaps. And it does look like it's flowing into place. Not flow. Now you don't, you only want to do this. I'm going to turn it off. You only want to do this with um, non reballed sandwich. So if you just reuse the factory solder, you want to, you can squish it back. If you reball it, don't do this because you will squeeze solder balls together and short it, uh, short the sandwich. So what I'm doing is just basically pressing down on the board so I can reflow the solder together. For whatever reason, the 11 Pro and Pro Max boards, they tend to warp, especially the little uh, leg section here. So I don't know if you can see that over here. Like it always curls up, even like when you're conservative with the uh, with the heat, it'll still kind of warp. So now we gotta hold this down and kind of wait, let for it to cool down. So while we wait, um, what type of repairs do you guys wanna see on this channel? I'm curious. You guys wanna see more sandwich repairs? No baseband, no service, no Wi-Fi. No one see no power, water damage, data recovery, uh, CPU swaps. Are you? Would you rather see tool reviews, videos? I was getting, I was doing a lot of tool reviews videos recently, just because uh, the OI Fix tool kept wanting to send me a new tool. After I recorded one video, they'd say, "All right, what's the next one?" and then, I get the next tool and the next tool and it's like, I want to do more repair videos. Repair videos also help bring more awareness that these repairs are doable. A lot of people who don't know that these type of repairs are possible. So, which brings me a lot of customers as well. All right, so let's see, I think I'm not seeing it squished down as much anymore. So I'm gonna get this out of the heat plate. So I like to use the sim saw as my little forklift kind of slot. I don't know, can you guys hear my dogs barking? I wonder what the what Facebook people are, do, are doing because I'm streaming this to Facebook as well, but I have no idea if anyone's even interacting. There's just too many windows. I have OBS, I have Zoom, I have YouTube, I have the split cam, which lets me stream to multiple platforms. So. Oh, I'm here from Facebook. Yeah, so if you're on Facebook, you're probably better off in the YouTube channel, but some people just like to stay on Facebook. Uh, yeah, not too many repair stores know how to micro solder. Usually they just replace parts. That's very true. Um, a, lot of, a lot of shops don't even know. Like, I didn't know about micro soldering until I started like Googling uh, no touch six plus no touch. And then that's where I found the touch disease situation. And then I found Lewis Rossman channel. All right, so I'm gonna uh, uh, soak this in alcohol so I can clean off all the excess flux. Oh, and by the way, speaking of Rossman, make sure you guys check out the repair wiki. I am a uh, official contributor to it. So I try to add as much as I can but we do want you guys, the pros, to help contribute to it. 
So if you're able to create some guides, like repair guides for whatever you know, popular device, iPhone, iPad, MacBook, uh, anything, let me know. I could uh, get Lewis Rossman to pay you for those guides and we can grow the base solution page. All right, uh, so I see an issue here. So looking at the side of the sandwich, I see a gap. Yes. Type of one in the chat if you guys can see that gap right there. Uh, wait, there's more. It's a bigger gap on this side. Maybe I zoom out a little bit. You guys can see a little clearer. So the gap is pretty large, although it looks like it's barely making contact. So I do have <clears throat> I do have a trick for this. Everything else looks flat. Just that spot looks like a big gap. This part, oh, this spot too. All right, let me reflow it again on the heater. Let's try to reflow it, I think. I'm kind of nervous uh, with this heater right now because I, like I mentioned earlier, it's been running hotter than the temp says it is. So I don't want to float something unnecessarily. Part of the fun of doing these uh, live streams, you guys, you guys get to see all my, um, all my screw ups. I don't know why it's all like it seems like almost all my live streams I end up with uh, no fix, <laughs> but you know I'm up to the challenge, and I leave them up. You know, not all repairs are doable. I know most people are scared to do live repairs for this reason. So I'm just kind of like, well, if it, if it is fixable, then it's a good video. All right, so right now we're trying to reach temp of what is this set to? 140. I just like how clean this looks. Well, let's see if we start seeing some flux bubbling. Looks like we have uh Netcom Solutions saying they're watching from Trinidad. Um, who else? Someone, Gran is watching from Myanmar, from Burma. Uh, Micromage in Colorado for the time being. We have a Canadian here, Malaysia. So yeah, if you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. Also, don't forget to hit that. Uh, smash the like button if you want to see more repair videos or yeah we got a we got someone from Philly looks like by the way if you're doing this uh, you know it's not a good sign if your screw post starts melting and like comes loose so Speaking from experience, if you see that, turn off your heater right away. I just had that happen the other day. Luckily, nothing went wrong too, too much. So this thing is set to 140, but look at that. As it overshot the temperature and it's still rising. So look, 140, but it stays at 153. So yeah, definitely be careful with these heaters. I had on my channel, I did a the JCI heater that also did the same thing. 
I did like 180 on a 10s. I forgot what model it was, but like it, it floated everything, solder balls everywhere. All right, you can see. So I'm gonna turn off the heater because it looks things are getting hot. So I can see the this part of the board moving. Also, I'm looking from the side. I'm gonna try to press down. Make sure we get a solid solder joints. Australia, Iraq, Virginia. How's the new heater? Love it so far. Just gotta be careful with the temperatures from what I've experienced. But it's a, so far, it's a better solution uh, on the market right now compared to that garbage mechanic one with the, with the LCD screen. Uh, definitely don't recommend it. Uh, Trinidad is a small island in the Caribbean. Oh, nice. Uh, make a video on how to remove iPhone 14 Pro Max screen without suction cup or buying expensive screen separators. Uh, well, I mean, you definitely need a suction cup no matter what. Um, no matter what. If you watch my 14 Pro Max teardown video, I show the process there. If you watch my recent iPhone 12 uh, baseband sandwich reball video, I show that my technique there as well. Uh, so far, I've opened a ton of 12, 13, 14 series. I only had a few mishaps and there were, those were my mistakes. I rushed it before it got hot enough to, to open. I was very uh, not careful. So technique works, you just gotta be careful no matter what. Uh, someone's watching in Kenya. Nice, I wonder if I got all the continents here on the live stream. Even though there's only 20 people, it seems like we're all over the world. Uh, what makes it better over the previous heater? Well, you're gonna have to watch the beginning of the live stream. Kind of went over all that. One, well, the key thing, it's available for sale. It's not uh, discontinued. See where it cooled it down. Now, visually, I can't tell much of a difference. So now I'm gonna get this out again. Hopefully this time I could just kind of spot spot fix or whatever the areas I need. I just got an email, someone saying they did long screw damage on an iPhone X. See what's on tomorrow's solder call. So Peyton, uh, the phone mechanic. So tell us, what do you think about the training program that you're in with us, the Natty Day Profixer uh, training program where we teach this and all, all kinds of um, iPhone kind of board repairs and stuff. Since you're here, and your students. Stay hydrated. <laughs> I'm definitely hydrating. Definitely was dehydrated yesterday. Oh, well, we got uh, someone from Guatemala, which is half of me. So my mom's Guatemalan, my dad's Mexican, so. Looks like we got a paisano here. All right, so now the sandwich looks way better, at least on this side. Um, kind of hard to tell some spots. 
Yeah, this side looks good too. So I, maybe I just need a little, all right, so that looks a little, the gap looks a little too big, but maybe I test it first. Uh, where's my mouse? All right, let's test this out. See if maybe it's fixed. I don't wanna, I was gonna show you guys my little technique, but I don't wanna do that and then ruin it. So let's test this out, see if we finally got this repaired. All right, there you go. All right, we got someone in Bakersfield as well. All right, so everything seems plugged in. So we're an hour and 20 minutes into the live stream. Obviously the live streams are also always long. I thought this was gonna be an easy split check and put it back together, but I guess not. All right, so let's plug this in. You can see it's on. So I didn't kill the board. That's always a good sign. Let me get the SIM card ready in case it is fixed. That's some tray. All right, let me unlock it. All right, so we have, oh, we have uh, still no service, but at least we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth back because they're blue. They used to be grayed out. Uh, let me check something. So Wi-Fi, we get some networks. Yeah, it's has some networks here. Bluetooth. Yeah, picking up uh, different Bluetooth devices. Now the cellular part still says error, but one of the tricky parts about this, uh, this situation is on iPhones, for whatever reason, Apple decided to give you a weird pop up when you have a baseband issue. It'll say something like this, uh, yeah, as far as I can go, an update is required to use cellular data on this iPhone. Basically it implies that you need to update it. Um, that's why your cellular is not working. Um, so what I'm gonna do, one way to kind of tell if someone's updated it while it had a baseband issue is to see if it's on the latest iOS which it looks like it is. It's on 16.4.1. So what I'm gonna do, um, by the way, let's double check something. Uh, about, yeah, modem firmware is still missing. So there's that. Also the screen's a little suching. So let me, let's do an update. So it's gonna take a while, but uh, I think we gotta do it. So we go back over here. So I have the device plugged in. I'm on Easy Flash 16.4.1. So this is what they're on, and we're gonna reload the same version. Basically, the idea is if the device is, where am I? Uh, the down bar? There you go. And give me a second. It's cropped differently. So the idea is if the phone is updated with the baseband issue, it basically kind of uh, gets stuck in that, in that scenario, it gets stuck in that state where it thinks baseband isn't working. So you gotta update it again with the baseband issue fixed so that it can then recheck that it's fixed basically. I kind of, I'm trying to figure out a way to describe it uh, in a, layman's term, but uh, essentially sometimes updating the device after you fix the board issue will fix the issue because without your knowledge, someone updated it in a bad baseband state. So, um, so yeah, there's that. So let's see if this thing uh, updates successfully. Hopefully it doesn't, um, 
doesn't fail or have problems. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, maybe 10 minutes, so let's do a QA, <laughs> I guess. You guys feel free to ask me any questions. Um, by the way, if you're watching this on Facebook, I don't even know if this is still going on Facebook, uh, feel free to join us here on YouTube for the live chat. And if you want to join the Zoom call with uh, Matt and Caesar and I, where you can talk to me directly, we're here as well. Uh, let me actually link you guys. It is for supporters only in my locals community. Uh, it's only five bucks a month, but um, yeah. So I'm I'm streaming this on multiple places on Zoom, but the private uh, chats, the VIP chat, we'll have it on YouTube and on Facebook. So if you want to join, I just linked it here on YouTube. Maybe I'll link it on Facebook. Let me see if I get a. Uh, find the Facebook stream. Oh, I have my, <laughs> forgot, wrong screen. Uh, let's see. Luckily I wasn't showing anything important. How do I find the live stream I'm streaming to? Facebook's weird. Oh, here it is. So we have, it doesn't even say. Join us on. So yeah, what questions do you guys have about, about me, the phone repair business, the microsoldering? Uh, let's see. All right, so I see the phone mechanics said it's, uh, about the program. It's a great program. We could definitely profit majorly uh, from the course, the basics, very advanced repairs, covering all. Also, the workflow was a major surprise on how valuable valuable it is. All in all, a thousand percent recommend the Profix Trinity Microsoft course. It's a community rather than a program, in my opinion. Yeah, it's one of the big things people don't realize. It's really a community. You're like connecting with a lot of other repair shop owners who are kind of in the same scenario you are. You're trying to learn. You know, everyone shares tips and tricks on how to, you know, make more money with these repairs. You know, everyone encourages each other to get better and all that. You know, there's no there's no drama in there. Nothing but positive thoughts. So if you want to join, uh, I do have a video, a link to that in my description somewhere as a Profixer 90 day course. By the way, here's what the phone looks like. By the way, you can see my blue lights. It's a Wi-Fi uh, smart light. So I could change the colors of it, which helps when I'm recording these because the overhead light always would be real bright on here. Let's see if I can show you guys that too while we're here. Let's see, smart home. Although I have really weak Wi-Fi here in my office, so these lights <laughs> often will be offline. So here's the app. You can see how it changes color. It's pretty cool. So this is just for when I'm streaming or recording videos, but if I'm doing like regular, um, of course it's not gonna work now. There's a notification. Let's see if this works. For some reason, only the color part is working now. So we change colors. Oh well. I don't know why the white color isn't working. I thought you boycott Samsung. So I do, although I bought this before the boycott, so I'm not gonna unnecessarily waste money but <laughs> um but yeah don't buy samsung products they want to ban aftermarket oled screens here in the u.s including non-samsung stuff they just want to do a oh there it goes um all full uh ban on aftermarket stuff 
So yeah, now the white light came on and you can see how it's very uh, intrusive here. So yeah, you could change the temperature too. So you want it like bluer, more like hospital room. I like to stay more on the warmer side. So you can see it's like more yellow, so put a blue. More like, well, you guys can't see it through that reflection. But for videos, I like to do the color. That way you guys can see this. But yeah, basically this Wi-Fi light is like literally the complete opposite side of the house where the Wi-Fi router is at. So I guess very weak signal. I do plan on adding an access point here in the office so we can get more coverage. So yeah, see so now I change the color and now you can see the screen better. All right, uh, do you wear anti-static bands? No, never have, never had any issues. Uh, honestly, I think that's only really important if like you're working at uh, NASA or SpaceX and have to have very precise uh, equipment and whatnot. Um, for general electronics, they're not sensitive like it was in the, maybe in the 1980s with uh, really low quality components. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, I know a lot of people like to brag about, not brag, but uh, promotes the whole anti-static bands and whatnot, but I don't think it's, it's applicable anymore to us. All right, cheers guys. Some sparkling water. How much is uh, the course, the 90 day course? Well, we don't have a price publicly and Ben Rosso will handle um, talking to you about pricing. It's more of a, I don't know. You'd have to talk to him for, <laughs> for that. I don't know why he, he doesn't like to give out the price because it's better to connect with you directly and uh, see if it's a good fit and all that. So if you're interested, um, send me a message directly. You can contact me through my website as well. Um, and I'll connect you over to Ben. So yeah, we got uh, almost there. Good stuff. Uh, cheers, Coca-Cola. <laughs> I hope it's the the Coca-Cola with uh, real sugar, not high fructose corn syrup. Like here in the U.S., you have to get the, the Mexican Coke to get the Coke with uh, real cane sugar. <laughs> the U.S. version comes with poison in it which tastes pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how they literally have the capability to do um, real cane sugar version, but they just choose to do high fructose corn syrup. Canadian Coca-Cola. <laughs> Uh, yeah, who even can create 20,000 volts in static? I mean, probably, I mean, unless you're like walking on carpet and dragging your socks and like, uh, you know, your hair standing up cause it's like static everywhere, then yeah, maybe get an anti-static wristband to discharge that. But I don't think, uh, in most repair shop scenarios, you'll have to really worry about that. So if you're worried and you have carpet, then maybe change that out to some tile flooring or something or hard, hardwood flooring. All right, we're almost done. Just updating Savage, whatever that is. Uh, I don't know. I've, I think, I don't think I ever had a phone fail at 
of Danny Savage, but I'd be interested to know what that means. It's really weird. All right, 91%. Let's go. Almost there, guys. So we, we have, we basically had a solid 20-ish viewers this whole time. So um, appreciate all you guys who've stuck around here the whole time. Type a one in the chat if you've been here since the beginning. I'd be curious to see who, who's been sticking around for an hour and 36 minutes. Yeah, modern consumer electronics are very well grounded. You can hold your microscope's metal post to this charge. Well, good info. Oh, that success. Now the real question is, does it, uh, <laughs> is it fixed? I hope so because I want to get rid of, get over, get this repair over with. But I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. It was pretty much pretty clear it was a sandwich issue. We had a bunch of ripped pads. Um, that usually implies there is a hard drop. And look at that, no SIM, so it's fixed. So now the real question is, does it work? Hold on, let me. Customer getting notifications. So uh, I have a <coughs> spare SIM card just for testing. And I found a new technique to not lose it is to always keep it in a little box because this box is a lot larger than the SIM card itself. That way, if I ever see that box open, I know there's a SIM card missing and I gotta go find it. Um, all right, so now let's see. I plugged in the SIM card my SIM card, known good, active SIM. It'll say, usually it says no service for a while before it, there it goes, T-Mobile LTE. It'll just kind of flip back and forth between no signal and uh, someone getting notifications and oh, T-Mobile LTE, three bars, and here comes the notifications. Um, all right, let's give it a, a minute for it to kind of do what it needs to do, but it looks like we're fixed uh up time one hour i seen the video <laughs> someone has stun gun they phone and it still worked so there you go myth busted <laughs> all right uh let's try a phone call so my favorite phone call is 611 not 911 611 this is a customer universal customer service phone number so no matter the carrier if you dial this you'll get customer service There you go, we got sound. Oh, classic. Billing. In a few words, describe what you need. You can say things like, Billing. Want to make a pay For billing, are you yeah. calling about your balance? Charges. Yeah. yeah, see, so audio works both uh, in and out. So it heard me and I heard them both on ear speaker and loudspeaker. So pretty much this should be good to go. Uh, let's check the cameras, make sure the cameras work. So we have uh, 0.5x, 1x, 2x, that's all working. Selfie cam is working. Um, yeah, pretty much the sound is working. Everything seems to be working, so we're pretty much good to go. So there you go. I get to finally log out and get back to my normal life. I have no SIM available when I pop this out. Put it back in my little SIM tray, and I could finish reassembling and get this repair out of the way. So, thanks everyone for watching. Um, I'm not really sure what to say here, but appreciate all you guys here who stuck around to the end. Um, huh, I see, I see some questions here. How much do you usually charge for this kind of repair? Uh, it depends. So, B two B will be one price and retail end user customer will be a higher price, but you're looking around 
the 250 range or so. But if you need a quote, you can just send me a message to get my latest pricing. Um, you know, we do offer a lifetime warranty for this type of repair as well. So as long as you own the device, we'll guarantee it that it'll work forever. I almost never have any warranty issues with these type of repairs. So it's a pretty solid repair. It's not, if it was having warranty issues, then I would probably wouldn't offer it. But this repair is pretty solid. I have a lot of experience with it as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you guys check out the links in the video description. If you guys have any specific tools you want me to link down there from this video, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for any type of repair videos you want to see, any tools you want me to review, um, any topics you want me to cover, just let me know. Uh, how do you deal with uh, customers with not fixable? So usually, uh, it depends. So if it's a repair, I know I can do. Uh, like this one, I know I can do. So I would, if I can't, if it, for a reason I can't fix it, then it'll just be a no fix, no fee. If it's a repair that's questionable, like it's smashed really bad, or like someone tried to fix something and then destroyed a bunch of pads, and it's gonna be um, a lot of extra work that shouldn't have happened, then in those cases, I will charge a bench fee for non-successful uh, repairs. Um, I see, I'm getting a bunch of questions now, so <laughs> you guys should have dropped these questions there in the restore screen. All right, I did an iPhone 11 screen replacement once the screen blacks out while on a call and stops and touch stops working. I do force restart and it started working again. Uh, I would try a new screen just to rule that out. I would try, I would check the ear speaker flex, make sure the proximity flex sensor is not damaged. Um, you know, there could be many things. Worst case, you can try an update or a restore. I usually recommend an update because it's easier to deal with a, um, because if you restore it, then you have to deal with getting the customer's iCloud info. It's, they don't, like 50% chance they don't remember their, which email they use or the password. So try an update, I guess. Or maybe you have bad screens. Uh, uh, someone says, thank you. I, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, guys, so thanks everyone for watching. Um, I'll try to do one of these live streams again next week. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see that. So thanks. Bye. All right, let's end the live streams.